Here's game. Um, my, one of my favorite books, actually. God, I, f I feel like Ender, right? Okay, in a way, it's sort of, um, I don't know, I guess it is a bit egotistical, because uh, when you see, I don't know, I think it's good to be able to pick out heroes. There was the uh, Liberty's Kids, there's that uh, cartoon that kind of showed the American Revolution, and the uh, the theme song was something about little finding heroes to idolize. And I, there's a lot of people that have come before us, and a lot of people that have accomplished a lot of things. And you, know, you should put you know a lot of um, stock in yourself and a lot of confidence in yourself. But there's so many people that have come before us that there's lots of examples that we can um, emulate and try to live up to. Like Benjamin Franklin, incredible. You want to talk about the education of Benjamin Franklin? Uh, his education education eventually leads to a revolution right and um, and he's uh, he was sort of obstinate also right he didn't want to be um, his brother's slave uh, even though he was sort of in the printing industry which is sort of what he uh, ends up doing anyways so um, yeah, so all of humanity is afraid by being attacked by the buggers. It's an alien race. I think they use a different word like in the movie or in later editions. There's many life lessons in the book. Even though the author spouted off some <laughs> fucked up shit, he's spouted off some... He's homophobic, which is no good. He's also insulted Obama and talking about how he's a tyrant and um, some other things. So, I want to go through the things that he says and then sort of analyze how, because I love Ender's Game. It was written in 1984, right, which is an interesting year, 1984, right, when you think about the uh, um, uh, George Orwell's book. Um, but he wrote it in 1984, so this is 30, 40 years ago. 40 years ago, he actually wrote, wrote this book. And, um, and the book itself, you can sort of read it and sort of, you know, take it on yourself however you want to. There's, it's not a homophobic book and it's not an anti, you know, um, Obama book. There, there was a passage in it that I had been told the original edition had that was racist, sort of like a racist banter between some of the folks. Um, but it's, here's what the things that Orson Scott Card has said, okay? So Orson Scott, Scott Card says that Obama is like Hitler, and he says something about that he's planning a coup d'etat against America, he's going to take America over, but he's the fucking president. So if Obama's the president, to coup d'etat, uh, the America would be to take himself out. It makes no sense. He's the president. He's the one that has the power. Uh, Nixon actually says if you're the president, anything you do is not illegal. If you're the president, it's legal, just because you're the face of the nation. You're the face of the country. So he'd have to take it. Uh, he'd have to take himself out. It makes no sense. So that's that's a weird thing for Orson Scott Card to say. He also said that Obama has concocted a uh, czarist plot by the Soviets. But in reality, the Soviets were the ones that had killed the czars, and also Ronald Reagan was the first president to start the, the drug czars, the war on drugs. So, you know, he's totally wrong about, um, I don't know, actually, I, I, I feel like there's something to that, because czars is a stupid name, why would you say that, and Ronald Reagan start the czarist program, and I, that's bull, why the, why, that's so stupid, that's insane to have a, a drug czar, because the czars are sort of, you know, the dictators who say, do as I say or else. Um, you're going to die. Uh, or Scott Card also said that Obama has a liberal, socialist, Maoist agenda. Agenda. If you know anything about Mao, he was a dictator in China. I think he wound up killing like a hundred million Chinese people. There was the, um, the year zero or the the start of the new China, where basically he just wipes out a shit ton of people. Um, they had farm collectives. The today communist uh, or China considers themselves communist, even though they're very much uh, authoritarian and capitalist these days. But the um, the ruler ruling class calls themselves communist, which gives you know the people sort of comfort, thinking that they actually care about them when it's total bullshit. But to say that he's like the Chinese rulers, which have no respect for human rights, you have all the people that's going into prisons. There's de facto slavery there. Um, the Chinese people are actually doing. I don't know. There's you know there's a rich class and a peasant class. So the peasant class is not doing well. They have no rights, and so hopefully they could survive and get through it all. Um, but to say that he's like Maoist, he's not going to genocide 100 million Americans. Um, there's only 300 million Americans, so that would be wiping out a third of the country. 
And uh, socialism, socialism isn't a, it isn't a bad idea. You have capitalism and you got socialism, so that's only two economic ideas. And we're supposed to be America, where we have freedom to think about things. And um, and I actually come to a conclusion of like half of each one. Uh, you, you should be allowed to live in America. You shouldn't just die on our streets. Uh, but if you want something above basic sustenance levels, then you got to go out and hustle it. So socialism to guarantee life. Uh, liberty and pursuit of happiness, sort of like how we was told in the Constitution, but the uh, capitalism kicks in if you want something more. That's my um, personal political uh, thoughts about socialism. Obama's not a socialist, okay? Even if he's like for food stamps, socialism is also um, about uh, the workers controlling the factory. So taking out the owners and the workers taking the power for themselves. I think also socialism is the next step from democracy. Democracy is ruled by the people, and uh, uh, even though we got a representative democracy, if we want a true blue democracy, that will lead to a type of socialism because if the the workers in the factory are the ones that do all the work, if without the workers, this whole country would just shut down. If all the workers just stopped doing what they did, the whole country would stop down, uh, would stop, and then we would actually, whatever demands we had, we would get them because, the, you know, we're the ones that keep the world going. The workers of the world, the working class do. And uh, so socialism is uh, basically saying instead of us working to make some um, owners at the top all the money, why don't we just run the factories ourselves and then make the profits for ourselves? And I think that's absolutely genius. That's what we should be doing. That's sort of unionizing. Um, you know, uh, unionizing kind of gives equal barter systems, so it actually it keeps the management in place, but it protects the workers, so their basic human rights are being protected. So it's still kind of stuck in the capitalistic system with unions, um, but I'm just saying like democracy and union, it's like the the first step, I guess, towards socialism. And socialism is like a cuss word in America, but it shouldn't be at all. And I'm not a communist. I don't believe in farm collectives, and I don't believe in what Lenin or uh, um, uh, uh, Trotsky or Stalin did in Russia, even though the idea of the communists take the state and then they get to implement their sort of ideal society that's uh, economic based system run by the government doesn't work uh, I think the government can be a tool for the people but it shouldn't be making all the decisions unfortunately we do have a nation state system and the government will do as they please regardless and instead of having the corporations control the government which is what we have now which is fascism that's fascism and especially in the cool school systems is totally fascist in fact in the education system it's more than fascist it's totalitarian and in the corporations when you work it's also totalitarian too there's a clear hierarchy um, you know uh, of, of, of order and it's clearly fascist it's clearly top-down um, hierarchical and then the school systems is totalitarian means they try to control your mind and they try to control your mind in school that's exactly what they do Julie Chancellor she says uh, out of Valley High School she says you know listen to what I say or go fuck yourself I will fuck your life up whereas me I'm a type of teacher that wants to say something interesting and you know all this actually it's this is this is for everybody this is for you know mostly adults I know that I say a couple of cuss words in this it's my own private channel I have a right to say what I want to say and um, and that's it right that's 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 all she wrote there and if people are inspired to read these books and that's good that's that I did something good right because these are great these is good literature these are they win all these new barrier awards the nebula winner the New York Times best selling selling author and the Hugo the Hugo Award Okay, so carrying on, Orson Scott Card says that Obama is going to develop a national police uh, where the, the national police would be these young, poor black kids, and then these poor black kids who have nothing will, can't wait to get these guns and just go around terrorizing everybody. So basically he's saying Obama is going to start gangs with the black kids. And where that comes from, Obama said that he was going to expand, um, expand AmeriCorps, which was created by Bill Clinton and its uh, National Community Service. That's what AmeriCorps is so it's sort of like the Peace Corps but for America uh, you know national and community service so I would think it's building bridges and helping communities sort of establish themselves in different ways I, I don't know the total it's AmeriCorps so you could check it out um, A-M-E-R-I-C-O-R-P-S 
and uh, Barack Obama had just said something about he was going to create a civilian national security force. They're, they won't have any guns, they're just volunteers, um, but that is where they're saying, oh, national security force, so you're going to use this program, put guns in the hands of, he says, inner city kids, which, you know, black kids, that's what he meant, and then they're going to have these uh, these gangs of inner city kids that are just going to go around guns and terrorizing everybody. So basically, he's just he's a race baiter, he's using uh, race in order to scare other people. So it is, I disagree with all this. This is all, it's actually really insane that he's saying any of this. And he's a good writer too, so he's able to effectively say the things that he's saying, but it's insane the things he's saying. He also says 9 11 was necessary um, to put into practice all the things that he believed America was. In fact, he says Ender's Game is sort of like an apologist book about Vietnam. He says that Ender, you know, he blows up all the buggers because that's what he was told to do, but it turns out that the buggers weren't invading. They were just a whole other civilization in a different um, in a different solar system. And they might have attacked them or done something before um, beforehand, but they were so scared of the attack happening again that they went to their planet and they blew the whole planet up and they killed them all. And then Ender has this sort of moral conundrum about it because when he was learning them, he actually found out that they truly loved him and then he kills them. So he killed that which he loved and therefore he's Peter. But then the other books talks about how he tries to uh, save the bugger race and how there was a couple eggs that actually had been saved and so he tries to save the bugger race. But how can you blame Ender? Because Ender thought he was doing something good. He was told that this is what the whole world needed in order to save humanity. He blows up a whole planet. And is it his fault? So is Vietnam the, the uh, soldier's fault? We, the soldiers thought they was doing something good, and that's all that really matters. I don't like that because uh, I think you should have a, um, a moral sense about what it is you're doing. Just because you're told to do something, that doesn't make it right. In fact, it totally negates... Uh, totally negates uh, any type of morality since obedience and morality are the opposites. Obedience is doing what you're told regardless if it's right, and then morality is doing what's right regardless if, uh, of what you're told. And actually the Nuremberg trials, they said that you have a right to disobey any illegal order. And I don't know if the troops or the, the soldiers are told about this because it's very much totalitarian. There's a clear hierarchy. You do as your commanding officer says, and you don't ever give any lip. You just do and execute it immediately as soon as you're ordered to do so. Um, and, and yet, though, if, if you're ordered to, you know, kill, like, you wipe out a, a town, My Lai Massacre, they said that if you're the soldier, you can't just say, oh, I was just following orders. That's not a good enough excuse. It wasn't a good enough excuse for the Nazis during the Nuremberg trial, so therefore it's not a good enough excuse for the American uh, Empire, for the soldiers of the American Empire. So February 1990, laws against homosexual behavior should remain on the books. This is what uh, Orson Scott Card saying. Not to be indiscriminately enforced against anyone who happens to be caught violate them, but to be used when necessary to send a clear message that those who flagrantly violate society's regulation of sexual behavior cannot be permitted to remain as acceptable equal citizens within that society. So he's, he's a huge ass fucking homophobe. He acts like if you love a man or if you're a woman who loves a woman that you're just going to start all this debauchery when in fact they the homosexual couples can show what an equal relationship looks like and a lot of uh, the children do better and they actually are happier in um, there's been studies that have, that have shown that the children of homosexual couples actually um, you know enjoy their uh, their upbringing they like how they were raised and since there's actually more pressure about it it seems like they, they probably would actually try to do a better job instead of just beating the shit out of kids maybe actually talk to them and get to know them and uh, uh, you know develop them as they get older so Obama will put a thin veneer of training and military structure on urban gangs, this is his words, and then send them out to channel their violence against Obama's enemies instead of doing drive-by shootings in their own neighborhoods. These young thugs will do beatings and murders of people trying to escape, people who have all seemed to be leaders and members of groups that oppose Obama. May 2013. So he said this last year, when his movie's coming out, which is he's, this is so stupid that he would even say any of this stuff. I mean, basically pissing, maybe he wants his political ideas to get out farther than his movie. I like the book because it seemed non-political, and so you could sort of put whatever face you wanted to on it, but now you know what it's about. It's kind of like, oh shit, it's kind of, I don't know. I took it differently, and I'm going to explain how I took it, um, I guess, next next video, but... 
He wants to say that the uh, basically Obama's enemies. He's going to put you know with the AmeriCorps, put the uh, guns in the hands of the the urban gangs and the the black youth, the lumpen proletariat, the 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 sort of the. Uh, um, the, there's a poor class, right, and the, he's going to use that poor class against his enemy. So, you know, I guess the Republicans or um, whoever Obama would consider his enemies. Uh, more Orson Scott Card. How long before married people answer the dictators? Thus, regardless of law, marriage has only one definition, and any government that attempts to change it is my mortal enemy. I will act to destroy that government, bring it down so it can be replaced with a government that will respect and support marriage and help me raise my children in a society where they will expect to marry in their turn. This reminds me of Duck Dynasty. Basically says when the door of homosexuals, uh, homosexuality is open, then everything else is like a Pandora's box. You know, everybody's just going to go crazy and haywire, and nobody's, there's going to be no laws, and it's just going to be anarchy and chaos on the streets, and that's just so stupid. <laughs>